I really enjoyed it over there, but uh, I didn't have the confidence to do any type of sports because I was just a shy, quiet art girl. So it wasn't until much later in my life uh, when I went off to college, I went there very naive thinking that I'm going to be safe and nothing's going to happen to me because I'm in a big city and why would anyone target me out of all these people here? And I was, I was in that? Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. It was rate number Virginia. one murder city for like four years in a row in the early 2000, it was like late nineties to early 2000s, I think. And by the time that I got there in 2007, it was, still pretty bad. It was ranked top four. But the thing is the city, there's a lot of people there, but it's condensed in a small area. So anything bad that would happen would literally be a street down from you. So it was always yeah. a rape, a stabbing, a shooting, like all this stuff going on. And so my first year there, I was in for a rude awakening and it scared me so much that I felt the need to go protect myself. So I ended up taking martial arts and I um, picked Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because it was the closest thing to wrestling because I've always had an interest in it. And I actually kind of try to go out to do uh, amateur wrestling on uh, when I was in middle school, I was in eighth grade, but my school wouldn't let me because at the time I got sent away to boarding school and they told me that uh, girls weren't allowed to wrestle because I was at a, uh, it used to be an all guys military school. So I got sent there and the year I got there, it became co-ed, but there wasn't that many women. So they wouldn't let me wrestle. So I never got to do it until college. I felt like this is my chance finally to do something like wrestling. But the problem is you can't just, jump on the wrestling team with no prior training. So you can't, because you can't do that, I ended up doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I fell in love with it. Started doing Jiu Jitsu and then from Jiu Jitsu it led to MMA and because of MMA I had to learn wrestling and that's what I ended up doing and loving. So through my MMA career, it actually ended up getting me um, just the connections in it and I went out to Albuquerque, New Mexico to train at the uh, Greg Jackson's, at Greg Jackson's. And I went out there just for a little bit to visit because I had some friends that invited me out. And then during that time, I ended up meeting the girl who writes for Fight Magazine. And she interviewed this fighter, uh, Paul Chang, that fought against Brandon Vera. And because of our mutual friends he added me on facebook and it's crazy because like albuquerque new mexico is a very small town it's very tight-knit and especially anything with an mma it's already very tight-knit especially back then because like i said i started jujitsu and mma around like 2007 2008 that was before this whole thing like really blew up to where it is now and is super mainstream but during that time it's like everyone's really connected and if you fight in may you pretty much know a lot of people so i ended up uh doing in may especially out in albuquerque at that time if you go there basically one person adds you from there and the whole city adds you like i'm friends with every single person from albuquerque right now so i'm just like the whole decided to add me on facebook so because of that this guy paul chang added me and never said a word to me for like four years, never said anything to me at all. It wasn't until I had already moved away to California to pursue my MMA career and music career. Uh, I was out there and he, I was training at Black House MMA. So he contacted me and said, hey, I've been watching you train. I think you'd be great for WWE. If you wanna try out, let me know. And because he was friends with the old recruiter and just like that. And it was crazy because I never thought I would ever had a chance to even be in WWE because I thought they only picked Olympic wrestlers. And I'm like, oh, I don't have a chance. There's no way I would have, or at least someone that had a college wrestling background that's won state championships. 
And I'm just like, there's no way that I would ever get that opportunity. So it was so far out of my mind. And honestly, I didn't even really know what it was, uh, like really what it was. Cause when I watched pro wrestling, like I said, I watched it before I really learned English. I didn't know what I was watching. I was so young. I was four years old at the time. Maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah, four years old. Um, I watched it and I didn't start really picking up English till I was six. I didn't start getting good at it till like years and years later. So by the time my English got really good, it was, I was like a preteen. So around 12 years old was when I kind of stopped watching WWE or at the time WCW and WWF. I stopped, uh, I actually, I think, I don't know if it switched over at the time, but it, anyways, I was watching it and I stopped watching it as much because my, it was always me and my grandma's thing. We would bond over it and she ended up getting Alzheimer's. So her Alzheimer's happened and she ended up having to be sent away to get taken care of. And so I kind of just stopped watching it. And then when she passed away when I was 16 is when I completely stopped. So there's a huge gap from the time that I watched it to the time that I stopped. Um, I mean, from the time that I yeah, watched it until the time I ended up going to WWE. So because of that, uh, in my mind, it was left to be what I remember it as a kid. You know, when you watch a movie as a kid and you're like, oh my gosh, it's, it's this and this. But then when you go back to watch it, it's different. And because you understand more at that point. But I never <clears throat> got to watch it. So in my mind, I was like, all right, this is the same as amateur wrestling. It's the same as Olympic wrestling. I actually thought mm. it was Olympic wrestling, but on a higher budget. Because yeah. Very well. Uh, <laughs> we actually watched uh, college wrestling at the same time, too, because we would flip through the channels and watch WCW and WWF. But mm. then when there's nothing else to watch, we'll watch uh, college wrestling and Olympic wrestling. And I just thought that they didn't have a budget. That's why they couldn't afford the fancy outfits and the pyro and the lights. So I was like, oh yeah, that's the crappy wrestling. This is, you know, the good one where they got the Real money. Yeah. For all the so <laughs> in my mind, I thought it was the same. And I thought because it's different leagues, the rules are a little bit different. So years and years later, I ended up doing MMA. Mm -hmm. And it was so far out of my mind that I just, Never thought it was even an opportunity until Paul Chang brought it up to me. And I was like, wow, here it is. And then I ended up training for it. And I did not know that pro wrestling was entertainment based until uh, two months before my tryout. <laughs> before my tryout. And yeah. I didn't find out till, so when I was training for it, basically I was at MMA, I was at Black House MMA and I was training and just doing the wrestling portion of it because my uh, wrestling coach, um, Kenny Johnson, that's over there, he was teaching me amateur wrestling and like MMA wrestling. So I was training there. Actually, the funny thing is I trained with Daria, which is Sonia Deville now, uh, there, <laughs> like way before my tryout, like eight months before my tryout. So we, I was training there and then I was also going to a strength and conditioning gym. So I was going to a strength and conditioning gym and my coach there asked me, do you have a fight coming up? And I was like, no, I actually have a tryout. And he was like, oh, what kind of tryout? I was like, it's for WWE. He goes, oh, you know, there's a pro wrestling gym down the street, right? And I was like, what? There's pro wrestling gyms? Because I thought that only WWE trained you in that type of wrestling. I didn't know there was other gyms that would train you in that style. So I ended up going down the street. It was literally walking distance down the street to that gym. And it turned out to be Brian Kendrick's school, Santino Brothers. Oh, so okay. I ended up training there for about two and a half months in an accelerated program. It was their summer program. And they just uh, trained me along with uh, Joey Munoz and the coaches there and they were great. So they caught me up to speed. And then I ended up doing my tryout for WWE back in September, 2016 and did the tryout and got through and ended up <laughs> being an NXT. Crazy. Oh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Especially back, back then, like they didn't sign as much people as they do now before the COVID-19 happened. So that's, 
that's definitely like a huge accomplishment. Was it like very hard as uh, most people would say? Um, you know, I think normally it would be very hard, I, it, but it's like, I'm but so you're used to it? Yeah. I think the part that's, that's been hard for me, it's not the physical part that's hard. It is the, it is the navigating the different types of things that you have to do and doing it when you have a martial arts background there's so many sim there's so many similar moves that sometimes it helps you and sometimes it screws you so for example something as simple as getting up they always tell us that we have to get up a certain way to yeah. get up to your height yeah i doing MMA and jujitsu and wrestling and everything. If you're right-handed, your dominant side is your right side. So the right side is what pushes you off. That means you're going left. So my muscle memory of doing MMA for like almost 10 years at that point, I naturally want to go the other side. It's like yeah. my brain's telling me do this, but my body is doing something else. So that was mostly the hardest thing for me is because I have this MMA background that I've been training for so long that to break that muscle memory, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of practice to do that. So that was really the hardest thing, but the actual tryout itself was in my opinion, not hard because I have to do stuff like that, like differently, but I have to work really hard in MMA all the time. Yeah. I used to train average of eight hours a day. So eight yeah. hours a day, it really intense training so it's, it's a typical it's, day for you right so hard yeah did it did it tell you to erase everything you've ever known on your first day kind of thing so you would be a blank canvas yeah so i mean they do a whole background check they did a whole background check on me luckily i don't have anything bad yeah. good girl <laughs> so mm -hmm. don't have anything bad um and there was some stuff like you know basic like cussing Yes, I do cuss. <laughs> so oh. I had that down. I had to take down the cussing and they found like crazy stuff from forever ago that I didn't even know I had anymore. Like my MySpace. And I don't know what uh, this, Your this friend, was, sir? that was really popular back in the day called Zanga.com. Yeah, Zanga, yeah, yeah. I was on there when I was like eleven or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like you know, I was an angry, angry uh, kid because I got bullied most of my life. So I was on there typing all out all my angers, like, F this, F that. Like, <laughs> I take that down. I was like, okay. Yeah, they really dig up your past, I guess. Make sure that, because I guess if they don't dig your, up your past, somebody else will once you're famous, right? So just a exactly. security measure for them. And so, yeah. Good know that I have that background check because at least now you know I don't have to worry about anything I know I'm clean at least mm -hmm. yeah so my next it. question is um sorry sorry plugging in my phone but yeah oh okay yeah yeah I was gonna ask you yeah I'm a huge fan of MLW I mentioned that you were the first female signed to MLW so I watched your match and then and that's it like what what happened there you haven't been back um, I'm sorry. You were kind of cutting out in the beginning. You said you watched my match at MLW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I watched the, you had the one match and then, and then that was it. I thought there was going to be like a huge wave of women coming in or something, but then yeah, I was just wondering what happened with that. So after that happened, uh, I have, let me see, when was this? This was, oh yeah, this was before my injury. So I got injured oh, you got in injured. October and actually, no, I already wrestled when I was injured. I wrestled injured. Actually, the last match yeah. at MKW, I was injured against Ray Lynn. Um, yeah. And, you know, she took advantage of my knee and bam, knees messed up. So knee is still messed up. <laughs> when do you expect to be back? After this coronavirus is over, I was hoping to come back like as soon as their show starts, but I don't know if that's going to be a possibility with this virus going on. We'll yeah, see. it might be empty, empty arenas for a while. 
So you mentioned uh, MKW. Uh, let's talk about Chinese pro wrestling for a bit. So how how is the fans like in in China compared to say America or even Japan? Is Japan they're more they're more reserved, and America they're more loud and you're in your face and they're very expressive. How are the uh, how are the Chinese fans like? How do you feel about them? I feel like they are more like the Japanese fans, more quiet. Like the real Chinese fans, more quiet. But the ones who understand pro wrestling, mostly the foreigners that live in China, they're the ones that end up making the noise. They make the noise, and sometimes the Chinese fans they'll catch on and they'll also realize, oh, this is what we need to do. So we're we're gonna make the noise too. But I think the foreigners actually really help teach the Chinese fans to. Um, interact because it's. I think it's mostly a cultural thing because uh, it's seen as rude when you're screaming at someone when they're performing. So everyone's really quiet and really pays attention. So it's just a cultural difference. But in pro wrestling, the pro wrestling culture, they like to yell and scream a lot. So yeah. <laughs> also teaching people the culture of pro wrestling. Yeah, that's okay to the yellow bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, see, I guess. So is there, I know you, you speak Mandarin. I don't know how good it is, but is there a huge uh, language barrier when you're wrestling in China? <laughs> no, my Chinese is very, very good. Very, oh, cool. uh, fluent, very, very fluent. I just can't read or write, but speaking, understanding, I know all of it. Yeah, that's good. I speak Cantonese, yeah, but I didn't understand a little bit of that. Oh, you speak Cantonese, you said? Yeah, I speak Cantonese, so I, I did understand what you said a little bit there. So. I don't know. Cantonese is hard. I, I can't yeah, there's more Chinese in general. I feel it's pretty hard coming from a Chinese person. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to mention the live viewers right now that the comment section is open. So, I don't know if there might be enough time that you might be, if you want to ask Zeta a question, we still have a bit ask of time. Me a question, <laughs> Hold on a second. This person here. So, I don't know if you can see that on screen. Oh, wow. I can see that. That's cool. Yay. Oh, okay. I, didn't know what, I didn't know what it was. I don't know if it's inappropriate or not. So now I can read it. So there you go. I got a fan right there. That's cool. Well, your your buddy, uh, Chairman Al, says uh, Cantonese is not hard at all. It is. He, he's probably still mad at you for what you did to him uh, last time in the ring. You dumped him. I mean, he should not have come at me. That's Chairman Al, you hear that? Don't come at Zeta next time. <laughs> Don't, I, you should know this, Chairman Al. You should know this. <laughs> the bang brings the bang. There you go. I mean, he, he understands Mandarin. You can say something to him in Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're still got a few minutes, but um, just wondering, uh, wrapping up here. Actually, yeah, did you want to plug your social media? Where can yes. we follow you? I am on Instagram the most, uh, Zeta underscore Zhang, Z E D A underscore Z H A N G. Uh, I'm on there the most because it's fun to use. <laughs> I am also on Twitter sometimes. The Zeta Zang, T H E Z E D A Z H A N G. And then on TikTok as Zeta Zang. And then I'm trying to get on Twitch more, but I've been so busy, <laughs> surprisingly, with this uh, whole virus going on, just mm -hmm. family time. So on Twitch, it's Chopstick Queen. But you can see all my, on my Instagram, it's on my bio. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you uh, make sure you guys follow MKW social media, Facebook, you're already on right now, but in case it's uploaded somewhere else, Facebook and Instagram is MKW China. YouTube is youtube.com slash Middle Kingdom Wrestling. Twitter is MKW Wrestling. And if you want to follow me on Twitter is Al or at Al Leung, A-L-L-E-U-N-G. So wrap, wrapping things up here, any, any questions? Mm, too many right now. So um, 
So playing wrestling, I feel like it's it's on the rise. NWA was there a few years ago. There's OWE, of course. There's MKW, uh, largest pro wrestling organization in China. What does the future hold for Zeta Zhang? Are you gonna wrestle all over the world, MMA, somewhere else? I definitely plan on checking off the list of countries to go to. <laughs> I would love to just wrestle everywhere. Um, of course, my knee is getting better, so luckily. But I am going to be wrestling everywhere as much as possible because, you know, this is what I do full time. So this is what I really enjoy and want to keep doing it for as long as possible until I just can't. <laughs> until so what, all would my the, what would be the top three places uh, on your bucket list to, to wrestle in? Which uh, top three cities or countries? Uh, UK. I'm supposed to go there, but it got pushed back. Japan. I was supposed to go there before OWE happened, and then it got pushed back. <laughs> so, uh, and then third, I guess. Uh, probably Canada. Yeah, maybe Vancouver, Canada. right? Maybe Vancouver. Yeah, Canada. I like Canada. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're in Canada. Yeah, I'm in the Vancouver area. So uh, Maurice had a question. Uh, when will you be making a feature film, Zeta? Would love to see it. So I can put it up on the screen here. Hang on a second. Hang on. Yoink. Feature film. I am working on it. Uh, it is such a pain to get the right people together to uh, create something. But I've been in the works of it for a while now. A while, while. But it's a matter of getting everyone together and... With this virus, it's really pushed everything back. Um, but I promise you, it's coming. Okay, so are you starring in it or just a supporting role or what? Um, just, I mean, I yeah, enjoy say being yeah. in yeah. it and yeah. directing and the writing aspect. I have a creative team over in California that mm. I work with. Actually, a few of them, but everyone kind of, you know, I have my skits team where they like to just do funny stuff most of the time or comedy related film. And then I have more action fighting film, but the girl is in Texas right now uh, and was supposed to move to California, but with this whole virus has really delayed everything. Oh yeah, it's unfortunate. Are you, did you ever, well, a lot of YouTubers in um, California, did you ever get into, get in touch with anybody? Um, I'm friends with a few of them, but it is all new friendships. I'm still pretty new to California because when I did live there, I was only there two years. Not even, actually. I was there two years, but I wasn't in California for the full two years because I was traveling all the time, um, mostly because I had to move my stuff. So I was, I had a, that took like a month within itself. I had to drive my stuff all the way from Virginia to California twice. <laughs> it was a pain. Then I had to go to Taiwan and I also visited Virginia a few times. So I wasn't in California the full two years. And when I was there, I was so busy trying to uh, train MMA and focus on work that I really had no social life. There was no social life. Um, and I was not really wanting to have a social life at the time because it wasn't exactly easy being in California when I first went there. Uh, I was actually homeless for like half a year almost, uh, living out of my car. And definitely wasn't trying to make friends because I did not want them to know that I was homeless. <laughs> but now I'm over that. Now I'll talk about it and laugh about it. But at the time, it was not something I was that excited about. <laughs> so... Yeah, I didn't really know that many people, um, only the people that I trained with, and even then, it was in and out, in and out. Uh, and then afterwards, when I got hired WWE, I moved to Florida, then I was there, and then after uh, my release, I was in Asia for like a year, basically, like back and forth for almost a year. So then after that, after WWE happened, I went back to Florida and ended up moving my stuff out of Florida and I ended up touring across the country from East Coast to West Coast for uh, about three weeks, I think it took. It took about three weeks. So then finally when I got settled into California, 
I didn't really get to settle in because I just dropped my stuff off and I went out to Asia again. So I've never, I haven't even really been in California for a full year. So which part of California? I am in like uh, Ontario area. Okay, I don't know where that is, but <laughs> not, not sure this, but somewhere, somewhere. Ontario. Yeah, it's not Ontario, I'm Canada. Not. No, it's not there. <laughs> it's okay, let's wrap like things up. But um, sorry, you had something to say? It's outside of LA, it's like outside London. LA. But close enough to LA to at least audition for some stuff, or uh, close is a relative word. <laughs> <laughs> well, LA traffic it might take you a few hours, I guess. Yeah, it, I would say an average of two hours. Oh, okay, yeah, it's quite long. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna wrap things up, but we got to answer this very last question from the boss himself, Adrian Gomez. What's your favorite match that you've had in MKW so far? You had, is it three matches so far or is it more in MKW? And which one's your favorite? Oh, well, memory. So I don't remember how many matches I had. I really, there's the hibiscus. The which one's your favorite then? Is it the one where you, where you dumped out Chairman Al? I must that was my favorite. Rumble. The rumble was fun. It was fast paced. There was, Everyone had a cool thing going on. Everyone had a different thing going on. It was cool spots. It was cool storytelling. It was actually a very unique of a setup. Very unique. So that Rumble was my favorite. Oh, Rumble matches all are all good, really, I really enjoyed all my other matches, too. So <laughs> that's hard. The Rumble, it was just such a unique type of match that it has to be my favorite automatically. Oh. All right. I guess we're out of time, folks. I uh, want to thank Zeta Zhang for being part of the uh, first interview, MKW Interviews. I'm Al Leung, and thank you guys, everybody who tuned in and uh, asked questions. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Zeta. Bye, y'all. Uh, where's my hand? Here. <laughs>